A Christmas Story. Hello. It's Charlie and I've got a Christmas story, for you and your friend. Promise me, you will sit there and listen, until I get to the end. This story is about my master and an experience, he encountered, many years back. We all know, that Ebenezer Scrooge was white. Just for the record, my master is black. At one time, in his life, my master was a hard, cold man and he was despised by many. To have a friend or two. Honestly speaking. He didn't have any. He did have a business partner named, Zeke, and they owned a clothing store. There was only one employee, who personally thought, there should have been more. His name was Jake and his duties included, everything, one could think of. He worked in the cellar, down below and the attic, that was up above. One day, while the three men were at work, something happened to Zeke. His eyes got big. He grabbed his chest and suddenly, he could not speak. Then he began, to accumulate tears, in his eyes and started foaming, in the mouth. Suddenly, he began to release gases, from way down south. Moments later, he fell to the floor and there, he laid still. Without any remorse for his partner, my master began calculating the funeral bill. After Zeke was cremated, his ashes were put in a toilet bowl and flushed away. A day or so later, my master confronted Jake and asked of him, if he would stay. Reluctantly, he chose to remain, because, during this time of year, good work was hard to find. Because Jake and Zeke was kind of close, he expected to inherit, a piece of the pie, but it was not so. For him, to have not been mentioned, in the will, it was a shocking blow. After the death of his partner, my master began to tighten up his grip. He was working Jake harder than before, even, though, he had injured his hip. My master did not provide medical insurance and of course, Jake couldn't afford to take off work. Jake's wife, had no love for my master and often, behind his back, she would call him a jerk. Her husband was being worked to death and the money, he was earning, would barely support. Often, she would encourage her man, to take that miser to court. Jake was a mild-mannered man and he wasn't one, to stir up trouble. Nevertheless, the work that he was doing, he felt, that his wages should double. Jake and his wife had three children and their youngest child was named, Tiny Tim. He was stricken with a disease that left him crippled, in his right limb. Because Christmas was approaching, his spirit was high and he looked forward, to that day. The family expected to celebrate together but Jake was informed, it would be no way. My master had plans, for him to be working, even on, Christmas Eve. If you think my master is a Scrooge, go ahead and believe. I'm not gonna sit here and try to defend my master's style of life. How would you feel, if you didn't have children or a dear old wife? A man can get lonely sometimes and could it be, that he's trying to reach out? Could that be why, he often gripes and shout? With the snow heavily falling and the people singing Christmas carols, Jake and my master, work without speaking. The shop is cold and some heat, Jake truly be seeking. He's reluctant to ask my master, to adjust the thermostat, because he knows that he is a miser. If Jake was at home, sitting by the fireplace, he would be drinking on a Budweiser. With 8 o'clock approaching, Jake reminds his boss, that it's Christmas Eve and he would like to go. My master granted the request and reminded Jake, that on Christmas Day, he needed to show. After receiving his paycheck and no bonus, I might add, Jake said good night. Although he anticipated the stinginess, he was just happy, to be leaving the site. As Jake was walking home, the smell of roasting chestnuts, caused him to yearn. He could only afford to buy a small bag of them, with the money, he earned. As he continued to walk home, Jake noticed a plump turkey, sitting in a store window, propped up nice. Imagining it, sitting on his dinner table, he didn't think twice. Along the way, he picked up a few more things, that would make his children happy. Although, not the most expensive stuff, at least, it wasn't crappy. Meanwhile, back at my master's house, he was sitting in his recliner, eating on some cold fried chicken. Not willing to waste a paper towel, them fingers of his, he kept a licking. After eating the chicken, down to the bone, my master went into the bathroom, to relieve some gas. He remained in there for 30 minutes, because much, had to pass. 
Feeling thirty pounds lighter now, my master put on his pajamas and headed for bed. As he lay there, preparing to close his eyes, he heard a noise that caught his attention. The house that my master lives in is very old, if that, I forgot to mention. Sitting upright, in his bed, my master looked around the room, waiting for the noise to repeat. Shortly thereafter, something began to pull at his feet. Scared to death, my master curled into the fetal position and started to shake. With a tremble in his voice, he mumbled. Who are you, for heaven's sake? Suddenly, an image appeared, in the form of a ghost and it was scary. Just, before he went to bed, my master shaved. Right now, his face is hairy. The image spoke to my master and told him, that he was the ghost of Christmas past. It was the first leg of three visits and around midnight, he would receive the last. Suddenly, my master recognized the face of the image, to be that of his business partner, Zeke. He then asked, Why is it, that you're bothering me and what is it, that you seek? Zeke responded by telling my master, that he was there, to take him on a trip. Way back into the past, they were going to skip. The ghost then reached out to my master and told him, to grab his hand. Back in due time, they would be heading into Virginia, would be the first stand. Refusing the command of the ghost, my master was socked in the mouth. The ghost was serious and again, it told my master, that they were heading down south. During their dwell, back in due time, my master was shown scenes of Christmas, when he was a kid. Although they were poor and times were often tough, celebrating that joyous day, they always did. As my master embellished with the reflection, he began to get eerie-eyed. Growing up, with loving parents and seven brothers and sisters was something he pried. Without saying a word, the ghost of Christmas past, changed the scene, to another. The time, he was hurried to bed, because Santa Claus was down the street. This was according to his big brother. As my master looked at the toys, he remembered the electric football set and the cap gun. He remembered the tricycles, bicycles and how, they had so much fun. He remembered the Christmas candy, the different kinds of nuts and the fruit cakes, as well. Silent Night was his favorite song, but he also liked singing, Jingle Bells. Noticing that my master was getting affected, the ghost informed him, they would be leaving in a bit. Five more minutes and that would be it. After a few more scenes, the ghost and my master returned back, to his place. It then, told my master, that the ghost of Christmas present would appear in an hour, dressed in white lace. Moments later, the ghost of Christmas past, faded away, into thin air. With a chill, running through his trembling body, my master got under his covers and just laid silently there. To himself, he thought. How could this be happening? This can't be real. He then, shook his head several times, to make sure, that it was clear. An hour later, at exactly 11 o'clock, my master's bed began to slide. Pretending as, though, he wasn't alarmed, he went along for the ride. Suddenly, the sliding came to a halt and there appeared, at the foot of the bed, another Christmas ghost. My master didn't scream and he didn't shout, but for certain, he was holding on, to the bedpost. The ghost, without saying a word, reached out for my master's hand. With a slight quivering in his voice, my master said. I don't understand. The image told my master, that it was the ghost of Christmas present, and that it was there, to do some revealing. Seeing that my master was reluctant to take its hand, the ghost grabbed him by the shoulders and took off, towards the ceiling. Before he knew it my master was strolling along the city streets. The houses that he saw were decorated with Christmas lights and the people that he saw extended holiday greets. Even, though, it was late in the evening, the smell of turkey and ham, pulsated through the cold mist. A few people were still about, caroling. A little old lady, even blew my master a kiss. Minutes later, my master found himself, in the home of his employee, Jake. There, that family was still up and that lady of the house was baking a cake. The children were watching a Christmas show, on television, while Jake, was gift wrapping, in the den. Although the family was poor, on each and every one of their faces, there was a grin. As my master continued, to watch the joy, that was in that house, his eyes began to fill. Tears were rolling down his cheeks, like that, on a sloping hill. At that point, the ghost of Christmas present, returned my master, back to his place. Even though my master is black, as can be, he was blushing, in the face.
before the ghost disappeared, it reminded my master that one more of them would be passing through. In a strong commanding voice, my master told the ghost that he already knew. With a newfound approach to living, my master pulled out a piece of paper and began to write. Just like he had been forewarned, the ghost of Christmas future appeared at midnight. Without taking time to introduce itself, the ghost took my master on a future trip. Come to find out later, the ghost was without a tongue. That's why, an introduction, it would skip. The scenes of the future were all at my master's expense. He was alive and kicking and none of this made sense. At the graveyard, he watched them throw dirt over a coffin that had him in it. My master turned to the ghost of Christmas future and told him that was some bullshit. The ghost paid my master no mind and it continued on with the show. Jake and his family was living out in the streets and their little boy was with them no mo. The business that my master owned had burned down to the ground and there was no insurance to collect. That was it. My master had enough and he promised the ghost that a new way of living he would select. Without notification, the ghost disappeared and my master was back in his bed. Looking forward to a good night's sleep, my master rolled over and counted 100 sheep. He then prayed to the Lord, his soul to keep. The following morning, when my master woke up, he was cheerful, as could be. After taking a shit, taking a shower and eating some breakfast, he put on his best suit. With a smile on his face and his wallet full of cash, presents and good cheer, he went in pursuit. As my master came upon this liquor store, he went in and purchased himself some Seagram's gin. He also bought some eggnog that was within. As he continued on his shopping spree, my master bought a meal that was already prepared. How Jake and his family were going to receive him, my master was a little bit scared. When he arrived at their house, on the door, he would softly knock. When Jake opened the door, it was of no surprise that he was totally in shock. He invited my master in and asked him to have a seat. He then brought his family in for my master to meet. After saying hello to everyone, my master presented the family with the food, gifts and some good news. Jake was being promoted to a position where he could implement some of his own views. With love and happiness in the air, my master began to cry. Jake's wife knew that they were tears of joy, so she just walked on by. She then came back and asked him if he would like to join them at the dinner table. My master responded by saying, I would love to, but do you have cable? My football team is playing and I don't want to miss the game. My San Diego Chargers are playing against a team where I forgot their name. December 1st, 2000.